Hey guys, I'm Cody, the editor behind Past Life Pro, and for this shader tutorial, I'd like to kick this video off with a good old fashioned question. Have you ever been fiddling around in the shader options menu, having fun, getting the game to look how you want it to look, and then realize, hey, I wish I had more numbers to choose from in this tab? What if I want, for example, to have the SUS Renew display options for higher GI quality than just 2.0? Or what if for the BSL V7.2 shader, I want to have the shadow quality resolution tab display 16,384 as the max option, instead of 8192? Extreme example I know, but the premise still stands. Modifying existing settings within shaders and having them display in the shader options menu is a great skill to learn. As for difficulty, I'd say the hardest part of doing this sort of thing on your own is knowing where to find the code you need to modify in order to get the result you want. But once you find that code, the premise of adding in new numbers is very easy, as you will see. To aid in your understanding of this tutorial, we'll be working with the BSL V7.2, Continuum 2.0.4, Project Luma V1.32, and the SUS Renewed V1.0.1. We'll be modifying two sets of existing settings in the shader options menu per shader. My friends, Without further delay, let us begin. First things first, make sure you have Minecraft open. From here, navigate to the Shaders menu. Click Shaders folder. A window will open up, showing the Shaders packs you currently have in your Shaders packs folder. At this point, feel free to add in your own shaders pack if it isn't there already. Make sure it's unzipped, meaning not a .zip file, and ready to work with. Drag that window to the side. Get it out of here. In Minecraft, click on your chosen shader. For me, I'll be working with the BSL V7.2 first. Now, click on the Shader Options tab. Post Process. And then, feast your eyes on the Motion Blur Strength setting. By default, 1.00 is selected, and if you max out the slider, 2.00 is it. No matter what your feelings are about if 2.00 is a good call for the maximum motion blur amount, I want to see a top of, can you guess it, 10.00, yes, let's go higher! Open up the BSL V7.2 folder from the side window. Click Shaders, click the Lib folder, and then find the settings.glsl. Open it up. Now then, see all these defines and the code that accompanies it? These are all great examples of what you will be working with. You will normally see a hashtag define followed by the name of the effect that it is defining. The number that follows is the default number. Whatever number that is present in that position will be active when you start up the game or refresh the shader. Directly following the two forward slashes, you will find a bunch of numbers between two brackets. These are the choices you get to choose from in Minecraft. Now then, explanation aside, navigate to line 45. This line of code here is what we'll use to adjust the motion blur strength. As you can see, the same name, default number, and list of choices are present, just like in Minecraft's shader options menu. Okay, I want to add in some numbers instead ranging to 10.00. So, I'm going to add in 3.00, 4.00, 5.00, 8.00, .00, and 10.00. .00. Let's go with that. Just as I do, there's no need to add in any commas or quotes. Even if you did, it's not going to break anything. But it will show up on the Motion Blur tab as a selection choice. So I guess that's up to you. Also, I'm putting these numbers in as decimals to stay in theme with how Captatsu, the shader developer, did the previous numbers. I don't have to do it this way. I can very easily make these numbers whole numbers and there would be no problems. Click Save. Now just reload the shader in Minecraft. To do this, I would just go and click on another shader and back to the one I'm working with. Though if I was in a single player world, for example, I would hit the key combination F3R to quickly have the shader reload right in front of me. When you've done that, Navigate back to the Motion Blur Strength setting. Have a whirl with the slider, and you'll see now that there are indeed extra options to choose from. 
And yes, to see the motion blur in-game, be sure that you have motion blur set to on, on the tab directly to the left. Alrighty, for the rest of this tutorial, consider the next bunch of examples as extra practice. We'll do one more for the VSL shader. Navigate next to the Shadow Map Quality Bar, which is found in the Shadows menu. By default, 2048 is selected, and if you max out the slider, 8192 is the top choice. As extreme of an idea as it is to double 8192 shadow resolution to 16384, I'm going to do it anyway. If you're still in the settings.glsl, then great! The line of code we're searching for is here too. Navigate to line 93. Now, for starters, instead of a hashtag define, we have a const int, and then shadow map resolution instead of shadow quality, of which is shown in the shader options menu. Well, I can't tell you how the const integer affects the shadow map resolution differently than a hashtag define, I do know that this is the correct line to edit, so I'm going to leave it at that. My friends, feel free to chime in if you can elaborate on this. Anyways, as you can see, the default number 2048 is present, as well as the list in brackets, accompanying the two forward slashes. I'm going to add 16384 to the list. Save and exit. After you refresh the shader, you will now find 16384 as a choice for your shadow map quality. Cool, now let's modify some settings in the Continuum v2.0.4. Select the shader, access shader options, access volumetric light settings, and check out the morning fog density slider. By default, 60 is selected, and if you max out the slider, we get 990, which means more noticeable fog if you couldn't guess. As high as this is, we can go higher. Access the Continuum shader, Shaders, User Lib, and then locate volumetric settings.glsl. One thing to note before we approach this file is that unlike the BSL shader, there are multiple .glsl files instead of a single one that corrals the entire shader options menu. As you will see, the code that we'd modify to get new choices into the game can come from all over the place, even from .fsh files. That's why I said before in the beginning of this tutorial that the hardest part to overcome is just finding the code itself. Okay, double click to enter. Scroll down to line 75. To add in new setting choices higher than 990, I'd simply start typing away. I'm going to enter 1000, 1050, 1100, 1200, 1500, 2000, and 3000. Hit the save button and exit. In Minecraft, we'd simply refresh the shader and enjoy the choices we now have at our disposal.
let's do one more for the Continuum Shader. In Minecraft, navigate to the Water Parallax Depth Slider, which is in the Material menu. By default, 2.00 is selected, and if you max it out, 5.00 is it. Well, who can judge me if I want my water more goofy and 3D? You? Me? Nah, don't judge me. I'm doing it anyway. Inside the User Lib folder, open up the parallaxsettings.glsl. Navigate to line 21. For my additional numbers to add to the list, I'm going to go with 6.0, 7.0, 8.0, 9.0, 10.0, .0, and why not 100.0, just for the heck of it. Save and exit. In Minecraft, refresh the Continuum Shader and enjoy the extra choices. Now for Project Luma, select the shader, access shader options, and then tone mapping. By default, all these sliders start with 1.0 and max out at 2.0, well except for contrast, which maxes out at 1.5. Instead, let's make all the tone mapping sliders max out at 2.5. Access the Project Luma shader, click Shaders, World-1 and then final.fsh. Navigate to line 7 through 11. As I have been doing, I'm going to update the list in brackets with my new numbers. I'll make all the numbers increase by 0.1 until they've reached 2.5. Save and exit. Go back to Minecraft and refresh the shader to see the new choices. And yeah, for these comparison clips, I've opted to instead make my own tone mapping presets with the range of numbers, so enjoy that. One more for Project Luma. In Minecraft, navigate to Color Temperature in the Environment menu. By default, 1.0 is selected and 2.0 is the max you can go. Let's say I want Project Luma to look so warm that it resembles what is going on outside my house. Darn it, I hate the smoke. Too many fires. Well, let's get to it. Select the Lib folder and double click on Colors.glsl. On line 1, I'm going to add in the numbers 2.5, 3.0, 3.5, 4.0, 4.5, 5.0, .5, and why not 10.0 to the list in brackets. Save and exit. In Minecraft, refresh the Project Luma shader and marvel at the color temperature that you can now endure.
And lastly, let's work with the SUS Renewed V1.0.1. Select the shader, click on Shader Options, Post Processing Settings, and then I want you to eye the Bloom Strength tab. By default, 1.0 is selected and it ends at 2.0. Why not? Let's add some more bloom. Access the SUS Renewed Shader, Shaders, and then Final.FSH. Scroll down to line 38. I'm going to add in the numbers 2.5, 3.0, 3.5, 4.0, 4.5, 5.0, 6.0, and 8.0. Save and exit. Refresh the shader in Minecraft and check out the bloom. And to finish off this tutorial, let's go add in some new quality options for global illumination in the SUS. Follow me to the GI Quality tab, which is found in the Advanced GI settings. By default, 0.5 is what you'll start with, and 2.0 is the highest you can go. Now as you will see in the coming comparison shots, we will have increased GI to play with, though the changes are very subtle, which is odd to me. You'd expect the changes to be at least a little bit more substantial, even the change from like 0.5 to 2 or 5.0, as we'll do. It's just, I don't know, I did. I guess I, ex I expected more, let's say. I expected more. Oh well. <laughs> well, if the need ever rises, I guess. Let's get to it. Open the composite.fsh. Navigate to line 32. In the two brackets, I'm going to add in the additional numbers, 2.5, 3.0, 3.5, 4.0, 4.5, and 5.0. Save and exit. By now, I'm sure you know the drill. Refresh the shader and enjoy your newfound options for global illumination. My friends, thank you for joining me on this five page script of a tutorial. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below and I'll try to do my best to assist you. Anyways, it has been a pleasure helping you understand how to modify existing settings in the shader options menu for Minecraft. If this Minecraft shader tutorial was of any use to you, then do hit that like button. And before you go, don't forget to check out my channel for some more Minecraft tutorials, some pro quality cinematics, and a bunch of other videos that you shouldn't miss. Anyways, I'm Cody, and this is Past Life Pro, where creativity is always a part of my life, as it will be for yours. Alrighty, see you guys.